This is a video technique for a repair of a chronic quadriceps tendon re-rupture with semitendinosis tendon autograft augmentation. The disclosures for the senior author are listed. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table and induced under general anesthesia. An incision is created over the anterior medial aspect of the tibia over the pes anserine tendons and carried down until the semitendinosus tendon is identified. Any adhesions attached to the semimembranosus tendon are then removed with a Cobb elevator. The semitendinosus tendon is then harvested with an open hamstring harvester and prepared to fit through a 4.5 millimeter diameter tunnel. Another incision is then made starting at the superior pole of the patella and carried approximately 8 centimeters proximal utilizing the incision from the primary quadriceps tendon repair. Dissection down to the quadriceps tendon reveals retraction of the remnant tendon. A Cobb elevator is used to mobilize and identify the tendon. The medial and lateral aspects of the quadriceps tendon are then tagged. Next, a spinal needle is placed at the inferior pole of the patella, and a ruler is used to measure the midpoint of the patella. A ronger is then used to decorticate the medial and lateral aspects of the patella. Then, an ACL tibial drill guide is used to assist in drilling a beef pin, lateral to medial through the patella at the previously identified midpoint. The pin is then ringed with a 4.5 mm endo button reamer, and a Houston suture passer is used to place a passing stitch, which will then assist in passing the semi tendinosis tendon autograft from medial to lateral. With symmetric lengths of autograft exiting each patellar aperture, the autograft is whip stitched at the aperture to prevent translation. Then, approximately 3 centimeters of the quadriceps tendon is split vertically to create medial and lateral flaps. The medial and lateral soft tissue tunnels are then created adjacent to each patellar aperture. First, they dive inferior to the retinaculum and quadriceps tendon, and both end near the proximal aspect of the vertical quadriceps tendon incision. Both limbs of the autograft are then passed into their respective soft tissue tunnels. The superior pole of the patella is then decorticated with a ronger and scalpel, removing remnant quadriceps tendon and the failed sutures from the previous repair. Three Q-fix anchors are then placed at the decorticated superior pole of the patella. Arthroscopy is then initiated, and an extensive anterior, interval, and fat pad debridement is performed to release the patella and allow proper restoration of patellar height. The knee compartments and injured articular structures are evaluated at this time. Next, the medial and lateral quadriceps tendon tag sutures are tensioned in a crossover fashion to evaluate the quadriceps tendon for proper approximation and defect coverage. Then two Q-fix anchors are sutured with a running locking stitch into the medial quadriceps tendon flap, and another similarly into the lateral quadriceps tendon flap, all located at their respective approximating borders. As the Q-fix anchor sutures are tied, the patella is positioned proximally while the quadriceps tendon take sutures are pulled distally to gain patellar height. The quadriceps tendon take sutures are then tensioned in a pants over vest fashion, with the lateral aspect of the quadriceps tendon coming on top of the medial aspect. The lateral and medial borders are then sutured side to side with number two non-absorbable sutures. The medial and lateral limbs of the autograft are then whip stitched starting proximally and working down the length of the quadriceps tendon for further support. The knee is then carried through range of motion to evaluate the suture tightening and determine post-operative rehabilitation.